before you came on, Vinny, uh, Sean and I were talking about White Sox untouchables, if they are any for us. Are there any untouchables, and who are they for you going into this offseason for the White Sox? Well, I don't remember the fourth guy, but I believe it was Sean Connery, Kevin Costner, and Andy Garcia, right? <laughs> Oh, great. That was awesome. That was perfect. <laughs> and Chicago, too. Awesome. I'm sorry. Um, you, you don't know? I, I, know, Sean, I, I heard oh the movie. God. I just oh, never Jesus. seen it. Sean. I'm sorry, guys. That was a great reference to that oh, old movie God. that I wasn't alive when it was old. made. It's like from the 90s. <laughs> I am also from the 90s. <laughs> okay, so then what are you It was 1987, about? a whole 10 years before my birth. Oof. Yeah, but you've Oof. seen all the Star Wars. Those are way the before Ale your birth. Central is younger than that movie. All right. Uh, to answer your question, Herb, uh, I mean, I think they're in a really, really weird position. I don't think you, – you talk about untouchables and that you might think they could just go out and trade anybody. I think they're kind of boxed in with this roster. i got to be honest. I don't think there's a lot of room for movement, and I'm working on something now kind of explaining that over the – you know, and that will go up over the course of the next, you know, two weeks here as, as, as the season winds down. But, um, you know, the – the idea that they might be kind of full at really any position besides a couple on the field. You know, when you look at the results and especially, as I just said, compared to the expectations, you would think, all right, there's, there's big changes coming. And certainly that's what the fan base wants, uh, you know, in, in reaction to the disappointment of this year, but go around the diamond and look, Yasmani Grandal's not going anywhere. No. If Jose Abreu comes back, he's a first baseman. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim Anderson's not going anywhere. Uh, you're gonna try. You're gonna sell uh, Yoan Moncada at the lowest possible point you possibly could. You're gonna trade Aloy Jimenez, who is the only, one of the only guys who's hit on this team this year. You're gonna you're gonna get rid of Andrew Vaughn, who's one of the two or three best hitters on this team, leads the team in home runs after a season where you couldn't score any runs. They you know what I mean? Like you, no, they have to do something. There's a logjam. Yeah. They don't have enough positions for everybody to play. But my point being, AJ Pollock's got a player option. He's coming back, right? You know, get, Gavin Sheets is a major league hitter. He, he you know, uh, you know, obviously Luis Roberts not going anywhere. Like they're going to have to do something, but it's not going to be easy. And and I'm not saying that they're stuck with this roster that they've got because you can always do something, but none of it really seems attractive right now. And I'm not even just talking about the fact that, um, you know, yeah, maybe the White Sox are right when they talk about injuries really screwing everything up and that if all these guys were healthy, maybe it'd be a totally different story. I, I mean, I buy that. I, I, I don't think that the full healthy team does this, and certainly not to this extent. Um, and, and so they can believe that with good health, a different result is, is going to come. Uh, something's going to happen because, you know, they do need to make changes. They do need to get better in a lot of different areas. Certainly defense jumps out as being one of those. And after the year they had, how can you not try to improve the power on this team? Um, but a lot of these guys, I don't, there's not many people who are leaving. A lot of these people are under contract. And to say that you're going to go uh, create a, an entirely different looking team by just getting rid of trading everybody and stuff like that. It's not going to be easy. That's not an easy thing to do. And I don't think that, I don't think that doing so is, is really a realistic situation. I don't think this thing's getting blown up. Um, and part of that is because they really can't. And the other part of it is because th this is what the plan was. This was the rebuild was to do this, was to have this team um, and that they don't, that they that they haven't experienced it, uh, the winning that was supposed to come with it yet doesn't mean that they won't. Um, but these are the guys they've invested in. They've already spent money on these players. Right. And I don't really see them just saying, oh, well, throw it away, add another $100 million to bring in a bunch of new players. Then they've got a $250 million payroll, and, you know, that's how it's going to be. I, I, I think this is not going to be the offseason that everybody wants in terms of the amount of change that is going to take place. So, uh, Sleepy Harold did mention maybe they'll get lucky and AJ hated his time here so much that he'll take that $5 million buy-off and dip uh, into the sunset with another club. May I mean, maybe if he doesn't think this team is a playoff contender, maybe that $5 million would make it easier. for Because I think he could get a contract that's like $5 million somewhere. 
Yeah, but I mean, why wouldn't you just take the sure thing, double digit million dollar uh, payroll that you're going to get that you've got written into your contract? I mean, did he have such a great season that somebody's going to that they're going to be beating down the door to get AJ Pollock? I mean, he hasn't really been that great this year. But he, but he's value. He has value enough, I think, as a a, a left handed platoon bat only. I mean, he's like a top ten hitter against left handers. Uh, you know, and we've seen like. Before the Sox, he was able to hit right-handers. That was part of like the plus in acquiring him. So I think that he might still have some value um, because I mean, again, it's like it's it's either ten million with the Sox or five, and then you know the bonus of what a team could offer you in in free agency. I mean, usually people don't, as Vinny says, they don't you know just opt out of free money unless they had a really good year. And right. I could see somebody paying him, you know to have the total of 10 million or more uh, from the five he opts out and then five for a deal. But why put yourself through that? Because it's like, oh, roll dice. I am a 30 plus year old dude. Maybe I don't play as much on another team. At least there, I know I'm going to play a decent amount. And next year, maybe this team does put it all together. I like the people here, even though we had a shite year. Well, and two, uh, there's also an, a thing where his option escalates $1 million for each 400, 500, 450, 500, 550, and 600 plate appearances in 2022. Um, so after tonight, he's going to be nearing around 500. Um, so the Get your money, AJ. The buyout should be probably around $7 million or $8 million, Ooh. if I'm doing my math right. So $8 million there. I mean, he might be able to make up to about like $10 million if they play him enough in the last 12 games um, to get up to around 550. So I don't know. I, I think that Pollock opting out might be a thing that they get lucky. But hearing you talk, the way that you said, like investing into players already, they've already invested money into Aloy. Jose Abreu's contract ends this year, and then they don't really have money invested into Vaughn yet. So that kind of just by process of elimination, that would make me think it's kind of a choice between Vaughn and Abreu. Um, how would you guys see that playing out? Would it just be Abreu's choice first, and then they would deal with whatever Abreu d decides to do off of that? It's what it would seem to me. I think if Jose Abreu is interested in playing in 2023, it's the White Sox should be interested in having him on the team. I mean, I know a lot of people are out there saying, well, He's the odd man out. Too bad. You got to get rid of him. I mean, the guy might lead the American League in hits. You don't want that. You don't want the guy who who is is still a great hitter and would love to play for your team because he loves it here and he loves the organization. Um, you know, it, the, the idea of, oh, well, it's time to move on because we got to get Andrew Vaughn out of the outfield. I mean, OK, say you do that, then you 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 still have Andrew Vaughn, but you don't have Jose Abreu and the production that he's given you. So, yeah. Um, I think it would be very difficult for them to to say no to that just because he's been so good, not to mention all the all the off the field stuff that is is a big deal with him. I agree with Vinny. Like it's Jose Abreu's call, and I would like it to be Jose Abreu's call in that regard. Like, hey Hose, you want to come back? Cool. What, what what how much money you want to make? Cool. Go ahead. Do your thing. You're a first baseman. And then from there, if you want to entertain trades with Aloy or Andrew Vaughn, cool, but we know we can't do this again of both of them being options for designated hitter and outfield. So one of them's got to go. One of them's got to stay if Jose Abreu comes back because that is the better option to have Jose Abreu a solidifying force right there, a leader out there, instead of just saying, hey, Jose, go and do something else. We'll have Andrew Vaughn here, and now you've just lost the production of Jose Abreu, and then are you going to get that – elusive right fielder that you've always wanted for the White Sox. That's going to replace the re the production that Jose Abreu had. And Alex Lord mentions in the comments, Abreu is still Abreu, come on. It's not because of Abreu's production. Like Vinny said, he's probably going to lead the American League in hits. Still, you know, he's not leading the team in home runs. He's got 15, but Vaughn's got 17. I mean, he's not too far behind. Um, he has been the most consistent hitter for the Sox this year. It's nothing with Jose Abreu's play, but again, this window is supposed to be or was promised to be one that was going to be open for a very, very long time. Jose Abreu was not a part of that just because of his age. So I think at this point with his contract being up, this is the cleanest way to just separate. You had to make that tough choice with Mark Burley. You got you let a franchise stalwart walk away. Um, you didn't do that with Paulie, um, but you did that with Frank Thomas. Like I, I just think that now might be the time 
to do that because Andrew Vaughn cannot play in the outfield anymore. Aloy Jimenez with this injury seemingly cannot play in the outfield anymore. And since you've already locked that player up, you need to protect him as much as you can. So it seems like Aloy will be the DH in 2023. I wouldn't like to see Andrew Vaughn play in the outfield again. So I would you know, think that he'd be the first baseman. It just seems like a very clear point to say, all right, Jose, we now need to focus on the future. Thank you for your time. We'll see you when the jersey retirement ceremony is, you know, once you retire. It's it's well, nothing Sean. about Jose and, and the player that he is. It's just where the White Sox are. If the White Sox won this division, I, there's, I, I'm not sitting here and saying, Jose Abreu shouldn't be on the White Sox. It's because they didn't win the division. But, Sean, you're arguing that the White Sox are going to be a better team without Jose Abreu, right? No, and that's I, I think obviously I'm, not true. So why are you making yourself worse on purpose? Again, I don't, I don't, he might not, he might say that's it. You know what I mean? He might say right. he's done and that makes it easy for him. But my point being is that if he's like, yeah, I want to play on the White Sox in 2023, why, if you're the White Sox and you spent the whole year not being able to score runs, would you get rid of the guy who was your most consistent hitter? Why would you let him walk out the door? Because you don't, because you don't want to have a few more errors in the outfield. I mean, that doesn't, <laughs> that's uh, ser- seriously though. Yeah. I mean, the, in, in the, in the ideal way that this is put together and obviously it has not played out that way in 2022 that the any defensive problems are covered up by offensive success and you are making yourself a far worse offensive team if you tell Jose Abreu to take a walk because Herb said where are you going to find that production how are you going to replace that production you're basically saying that what that that AJ Pollock and Aloy and Andrew Vaughn are going to collectively uh, make up for for Abreu departing just because they finally are playing the positions they're supposed to. Well, it's it's not because they're playing the positions they supposed to. It's hopefully Aloy steps up and becomes the forty home run hitter that we thought he would be this year. Regardless, um, you know, we thought that he would have that power. So I mean, we're just expecting Aloy to be the player that he was supposed to. This is you know, this is outside of a, a, a conversation about Jose Abreu. I mean, Aloy Jimenez just hasn't met expectations yet. Andrew Vaughn's a, a top three pick. Like, I mean, he should have higher expectations even than the season that he's had this year. And I think partly the reason his offensive numbers are down is because he's playing out in the outfield, a place that he's not used to. I don't think he's used to running that much. His speed kills him. I think he's trying his best out there, but like, he's just not fast enough to be in the outfield. So all I'm saying is I think that you need to start developing the player's for the future core. And I think that playing those players at those spots would help their development. It's not anything about the White Sox would be a better team without Jose Abreu. They will be a worse team without Jose Abreu, but we're not talking about the AL Central champions, the the 2022 Chicago White Sox. We're talking about the failing 2022 Chicago White Sox. So how do you avoid that failure and how do you grow grow to become a better team and keep that window open? I don't think 36-year-old Jose Abreu needs to be a part of that window and keeping that window open. I think it's mainly keeping him around because he has been a White Sox his whole career. I love Jose Abreu. I think that, again, he sh- his re- jersey should be retired um, you know, at guaranteed right field. Mm-hmm. But I just think that you need to let that transition happen at some point, and it's a clean point to do it. It's a tough pill to swallow, but they should have fucking won games. Like, hey. I don't know. Like... We shouldn't be having this conversation in September, right? We should be talking about the play, the White Sox in the playoffs, but here we are. CHO White Sox resident Jose Abreu hater, Sean Anderson, playing the role perfectly. <laughs> playing the role perfectly. I would love for Jose Abreu to say, hey, you know what? I love the White Sox time, but you know it's time for me to win a championship, and I don't see it here, and he goes somewhere else. For his own sanity, for our sanity. And I, I think most White Sox fans say, like, hey, man, we understand that. And that would be cleaner for the White Sox to do that. Now, I don't understand. I don't know how the White Sox would replace the production there. I sp- see people saying right field, second base. How long have the White Sox looked for a second baseman and a right fielder in the free agent market and struck out? I do not trust this front office to get it right. So... Let's just bring back the player that I know is going to be consistent. And now the numbers are not as home run friendly as they usually are, or RBI friendly as they usually are. But I know that Jose Abreu is one thing. He's consistent for most of his career. He's been 30 home runs, 100 driven in. And I think he'll be that for the rest of his White Sox career. So bring him back. Bring Andrew Vaughn back. Bring Aloy back. And then find a way, a team that wants to get Aloy Jimenez, and you are trading them pennies on the dollar. And it's sad, and it's a bad thing. And you know when you trade Aloy Jimenez that eventually he'll figure it out and the injuries will stop and he'll be an all-star. 
but hopefully you can get somebody back that's going to help your major league team in 2023 and 2024 and beyond because you can't go into next year with the four guys that they had right there with Gavin, uh, Andrew, Jose, and Aloy playing three spots for four men. I mean, hey, see how hard this is? See how yeah. hard this is and how yeah. hard this is going to be? I mean, I'm serious. I mean, the, the, the thing that I would counter to what Sean said was when you talk about a window, they're in the window. Yep. Uh, right. And I think that's what's made people so upset about 2022. 2023 is part of that window, too. And to uh, to basically say, like, yeah, we don't need the guy who maybe was our best hitter last year because, you know, reasons. And, and your reasons are not wrong. Your reasons are not wrong. They would be a way um, – better defensive team if Andrew Vaughn could play first base and Aloy Jimenez could play DH every day. They'd be a much better defensive team. Uh, but that, there's two sides of the ball, and, uh, and and I think offense could suffer dramatically if you if you basically say, all right, we're all right with the best hitter on the team taking a walk, uh, you know, and, and that's a shame. Well, my main worry, too, would not only just be like Jose Abreu, losing Jose Abreu, clearly using, losing one of the best first base bats um, in Major League Baseball, but I mean, Yasmani Grandal, when he signed here, he said, you know, we want to win one for Jose. And we, we hear about, you know, the way Luis Robert and Aloy Jimenez, you know, surround themselves. So I also wonder how those players would react to Jose leaving the clubhouse. I mean, it, do, it doesn't seem like an easy decision to make. But again, you have to make the hard decision on one of those players leaving, it feels like. I think like that's the first thing of the White Sox offseason is not a, a Dylan Cease extension because that seems difficult now that he's a Boris client. It's not second base or, or right field because I think that you need to define what this roster is going to look like. And I think you have to figure out whether it's a Abreu, Aloy or Vaughn. And it was described as a multi-year window. I don't think that Jose Abreu helps you in a multi-year viewpoint. Andrew Vaughn and Aloy should, or you at least brought them into this organization to help you in a multi-year window. Jose Abreu was brought here for a completely different window. He was brought here for that 2015-2014 window and even that like early 2019 and 2020 window. That's why they only signed him for three years. Like I, I just think that now would be Sean, the easiest time hit? to move on. Sean, can he still hit? Yeah, it's it's not about his play, Vinny. It's not about his play. It's, well, it is. It has to be. That's the whole point. You're trying to win baseball games. You got to score more runs than the other team. And and for the vast majority of this season, they couldn't do that. They had a really hard time doing that. And the one guy that was hitting was Jose Abreu. And, and if you're saying, ah, oh, he's old, he doesn't belong in the long term future. Well, okay, then sign him to a one year deal, 2023. And, and let him hit because he can still hit and he can still help you just as much, as, if not better, than everybody else on this roster right now. And to put a cap on my comments about this, I think Jose Abreu wanting to come back to play baseball and the White Sox saying, no, we don't want you anymore is going to be a huge hit for the fans. The fans will not like that at all, even though they think, you know, it would be a cleaner break for everybody involved if he didn't play baseball at all. But if he wants to play baseball next year and the White Sox say, eh, we're good, go somewhere else, I think it'll be very bad for the uh, front office. I think we'll be talking about it on our offseason shows. Like, you can't do that to a White Sox legend, even though they've done that to multiple White Sox legends in Carlton Fisk and uh, Frank Thomas that left unceremoniously here. You don't want to do that for a guy who's going to have a statue back there in the uh, concourse. As he should. Again, this is not a, 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 a statement on Jose Abreu's play yep. this year because he has been the best part of the 2022 year he's still playing every single game he's giving his effort every single day at the park so again it's not about Jose Abreu I'm not trying to hate on him uh just again the White Sox shouldn't be in this position uh and, and it's sad that they are